once you've downloaded the virtual disk uh, that we've provided, uh, here it is, it should be pretty large, 5.2 gigabytes. Um, hopefully it's the correct file and it hasn't gotten messed up at all. You'll soon learn by trying to boot it up. So what I'm going to do is on my computer, <clears throat> I mean this is a Mac, but if you're on Windows or whatever, um, you want to make a copy of this thing. So actually I'm just going to move, I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call this uh, 61B uh, image for real, I guess. I don't know, whatever. Okay, sure. Um, so there's been a number of aborted attempts. Uh, so let's try copying this up here. All right, so now I have a copy of it. And then I'm going to make another one. Uh, so this file right here is, you can think of it as an entire computer inside a file. Um, just in case I mess something up, I'm going to make a copy. Uh, and so while that's happening, uh, oh, so fast. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we'll just watch it. It's pretty fun. Yeah, there we go. Good job, solid state drive. Uh, so now I have a copy. Um, we'll name it backup. And so if I ever mess this file up, I don't have to redownload the whole 5.2 gigabyte thing. Okay. Uh, so what you'll do next is you should go to virtualbox.org and you should download, and you're welcome to do this, whether you're whatever operating system you want, but I'm guessing mostly Windows people are the ones who'll be interested. Um, so you'll go here uh, and something will download and you'll install it and it should be pretty straightforward. Won't put any spyware on your computer or anything. It'll be great. You'll love it. So once you've uh, installed that, which I'm not, I already have it installed, so you know, I'll let you guys do that. Go to VirtualBox, um, and you will say new. So I already have two other virtual boxes unrelated to the one we're about to install. I say new, uh, and then I'm just going to put in here whatever name I want. So um, ferocious um, octopus. All right. Uh, oops. And so I want Linux, and I'll pick Ubuntu 64-bit. Um, we're assuming you have a 64-bit computer. If you don't, uh, well, you probably have an extremely old computer. So uh, I guess go to the lab because everything's probably not going to work anyway. Then we pick an amount of memory. It doesn't actually much matter. Um, this laptop apparently has an insane amount of memory. Um, I would just stick it at least maybe at a gigabyte. You probably won't run into any trouble. To whatever. Uh, and then I'm going to say use an existing virtual hard drive. So I'm going to say. Uh, this one. And now it says, okay, that's the computer. I push create. Everything should be good. Here's Ferocious Octopus. Okay, so now let's press start and see what happens. Okay, so it says this thing at the top. This host supports mouse pointer integration. That means that you... Oh, okay, well, I closed it. I don't actually know what that means. It always says that. Okay, so something's happening. Uh, okay. Cool. Oh, look, Linux. Now you notice this Linux is very small and uh, also has the annoying property that if you move your mouse around, you'll see it seems a little choppy. So let's uh, talk about why that is and how you can fix these things. Actually, I'm going to test something real quick. Um, if you press the full screen button, uh, let's see what happens. It's current mode. Okay, yeah, see, that's not so good. That's a bad behavior. So we want it to actually expand to fill the screen so we get all the pixels we want. So I'm going to defull screen it. Uh, and I'm going to show you first uh, a very important thing you should do. Um, so let's see. So I just opened a terminal. Um, and my goal at this moment is, um, actually, let me, let me explain what's up. So right now, Linux uh, is running and thinks it's on real hardware uh, as opposed to a virtual box. And there's just various little tiny things that are wrong. So what we need to do is install something called the guest additions. Uh, which is going to tell Linux some secret information that it needs so that it can communicate better with, not hardware, but with this program. Okay, and once we do that, uh, things will be better. So let's do that real quick. Okay, uh, the next step we're going to do is follow these directions that are on the VirtualBox site. I guess I should show you how I found them. Uh, so VirtualBox guest editions install Ubuntu. Uh, and we'll go to the link from virtualbox.org. Uh, guest editions for Linux, and there you are. All right. Um, so what we'll do is start with the from this spot, and we will say sudo apt-get install dkms. All right. Uh, and if you want, you can read the full details here, but I'm just going to show the commands. So I do that, and ask me for a password. So it wants to know the administrator password, which, uh, after a bit of guessing, I figured out a CS61B. Uh, Gene set this up, so thank you, Gene. 
Okay, so it runs that, and it says, do I want to continue? Yeah, I do, that sounds great. Okay. So it's connecting to somewhere, that's happening. Uh, and then the next thing will be this. So it says, insert the virtual, this thing, into your uh, virtual CD-ROM. So to do that, we go to uh, Devices, Insert Guest Editions CD Image, and uh, yours won't say this, uh, I think. Let's find out what happens. Okay, so I'm inserting it. Okay, it's because I secretly inserted it earlier. Um, so after you've inserted it, it may pop up with a message saying run automatically. In my case, it didn't because of the way I just did it. Say no. Tell it you want to be able to, uh, you want to do it yourself. Then it says change to the directory where your CD-ROM drive is mounted. Where is that? Uh, we'll go to slash media, and there will be a number of folders. Uh, for whatever reason, our CD-ROM is named 61B. So here we are now in my present working directory. I'm in media CS 61B. And I go to VBox editions, and here are all the things we need. Uh, well, we only need one of them, actually. So if I were, for example, installing, if I had a virtual Windows machine instead of a virtual Ubuntu, uh, or Linux machine, I'd run this. Uh, but since we're in Linux, we're going to use this. So uh, we will go here. Um, so I'm going to do um, Control Shift Copy, uh, and I'll say sudo sh Control Shift V, and that will run. Okay. Ah, okay, I guess these are the really step-by-step -step parts. Um, okay, I think everything should just work. I didn't know that had that there. All right, anyway. So, la la la, this is installing. So let's take a little break while however long this thing. It'll take a while, I'm sure. Okay, great, it is done. So it says I may need to restart. Uh, let's just restart the whole thing, uh, see if things are any better. So I'm gonna say sudo uh, shutdown Go shut down now. All right. Okay. So now Ubuntu is shutting down, um, and then we'll restart it in a moment. <laughs> How's it going? I guess you can't talk to me. Oh well. Hmm. Loneliness, eh? I'm about to go grocery shopping, so you know I'll have food as company. Then I'm getting surfing. Mm hmm. Will it ever end? Okay, well, let's see. All right, I'll pause again. All right, I see the copy of this that Gene created. It has the same problem every virtual box I've ever made has, uh, which is that, I don't know if it's actually a problem, but at some point it has completed shutting down, but it doesn't report that. I don't know what, but I'm going to close it, and now I'm going to power off the machine. Okay, so for whatever reason, it doesn't really shut down. A mystery. Now let's try starting it up again. The thing I'm using to record my screen, by the way, does not have a nice uh, ability to fast forward, unfortunately. So I can cut, but I cannot speed up. Okay, um, so let's see if things are any better. I'm gonna try full screening. Might not be there yet. Okay, that's good. So I have full screen. Let's see if it feels any snappier. Okay, I'm gonna try dragging this thing. Oh no, okay. Maybe you can't tell in this recording, but that is really laggy and awful. So we have full screen now, that's good, but we have one more very, very important thing to do. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to my window here, and uh, I'm gonna say Unity 3D support. Uh, oops, uh, check. So what I wanna do is see, um, this magic command I'm going to run, uh, which is going to tell me whether or not my Ubuntu is currently th uh, supporting 3D, and I can promise you it's not because of how horrible it is. Uh, but let's do this because you may run into this again. If your virtual box is ever really slow, it's probably this. Uh, so I'm gonna try copying and pasting. Uh, oops. Okay. Um, so. I'm gonna to go to devices, shared clipboard. Oh, it's already bi-directional. 
So let's hope that this copy and paste. If not, we'll have to retype it. So it's Control Shift V. Ah, good. Okay, I run this thing, and you'll see uh, it says Unity 3D supported no, and not software rendered no. So not software rendered no is a double negative meaning yes, software rendered. We really don't want that. Uh, so to fix this, uh, we're now going to shut down our machine again. And this time I will not chit chat with you, but I'll just cut straight to it. Uh, so you know, in real go. See you in a second. Okay, now that our machine is shut off, we can change settings. You cannot change these settings while the machine's still running. So this must say powered off at this point. You say settings, uh, display, enable 3D acceleration. Um, that's super important. This is your number one thing for making your life not terrible. Uh, another thing I can do actually under system, uh, maybe let's see, where does it go? Uh, there's a thing where I can set the number of processors. Not processor, okay. I would recommend setting this to two. Um, it, you might, if your real computer starts being really slow because of that, you can switch back to one, but I find the experience of having two uh, cores running is nice. So I'm gonna say two. Uh, what that means is that your virtual box will remain responsive while you're running heavy duty programs. So I'll set it to two. Um, but the most important thing I just did, the thing that's making it actually not horrible, is enabling 3D acceleration. So now let's try booting it up again. Again, I'll pause while this thing boots. Uh, once you've done that, installed everything, let's try again. See if it's any snappier. Ah, silky smooth. Okay, beautiful. Um, so at this point, you have a fully functioning Linux machine, and anything you want to do, uh, we've already installed a lot of the stuff, so like the homework command should work. Uh, so that's nice. Um, I would recommend, you know, creating a folder called work, uh, and there'll be some setup you have to do. Actually, let's, let's do it. So obviously if I do homework init, uh, homework one or something, it's not going to work. So I have to enter my login, 61B-AA. Um, should I remember that? Yes. Okay, password. Um, so I have not done the setup where I do all the, um, it's going to ask me for a password. Oh, ah, I haven't done the important steps. Okay, so no matter what you do, if you type password now, my actual password, uh, it will not work. So what we need to do now is go through home setup.readme. Okay, so full screen this, whatever. I may as well use this machine. That is my other one. Start up Firefox. Okay, ah, uh, it's huge. Okay, um, so inst, but new. That was weird. Okay. How? I will never understand what just happened. Okay. Somehow it knew that when I did inst that I wanted this class, uh, even though I've never used this machine. Okay. Um, so I'm going to work through all these steps. Now, rather than, um, let's see, I guess uh, even though we already have the homework command set up, that is, we've already done some of these steps, it's probably not a bad idea to go through this whole thing again. So I have another video, which I posted on Piazza, which goes through this. That'll work just fine, since you will be in Ubuntu now. And when you're done, uh, everything will really work. So I think it's probably a good exercise to go through this, so you can understand uh, what the steps are. So see my other video. Changed my mind. I have to test this thing anyway. So I'll just record it. All right. Uh, so let's um, test all these things out. Make sure everything works. Okay, um, the thing that inspired me is if you type in gjdb when you start, it will give you this error. So doing going through all these steps will fix it. Java version, Python 3 version, R, uh, I'll put a space. So Python 3 should be installed. rsync installed. svn installed. Okay. Um, so let's do this first step. rsync. Okay. Um, Control C, Control Shift V, uh, CS61BA dash AA at Taurus dot six dot Okay, Control C, Control Shift V, and it R syncs. Type in my password, uh, and now at this point, uh, GJDV I suspect will function. Okay, good. Um, so now we have the latest, greatest homework software. Uh, and next we need to uh, set up our SSH keys. Um, so I'll go here and uh, let's see. You already have an SSH directory, so you don't need to do that. The next thing you'll need is this password. 
Um, so I will uh, control C, shift V, uh, CS61B dash AA at torus.cs.berkeley.edu. Uh, I'll just copy and paste the rest of this. Uh, more window. Okay, I made more Linux. That works. Uh, you can resize this thing dynamically. Oops. Okay. Type in my password. Uh, and if I go to the SSH directory now and look, I will have this new file. All right, this is the magic key I need to be able to log into the instructional machines and use homework init. Next thing I'm going to do is create the file .ssh slash config. Okay, so um, we're in .ssh. So I'm going to use Sublime because it's installed already. Okay. You can use Emacs or whatever you like, other, whatever else you like. But I'm going to start config up. Uh, and I'm going to copy and paste exactly this in there. Um, and as long as I have only that, things should be fine. If you start adding other stuff, it can mess up. Uh, so that was, I don't know why you would, but just be aware. Oops. Nope. Okay, control save. It is saved. Okay, now I'll try running this command. Uh, and, ah, okay, good. So that means uh, that should work. Um, I'm going to skip this step. So basically what it lets you do, uh, I don't know, whatever. Why skip steps? Let's, you know, we may as well do it. Uh, now it's making my video long. Okay, so um, you'll notice that if I try and log into the instructional machines, I'm bothered with the irritation of oh, not having to type a type password. Okay. Well. Uh, oh, ah, <laughs> okay, I get it. Uh, so this is a step you do on the server. Okay. Hmm. Well, uh, okay, so if you want, you can do this step. So the way you do it is, obviously when you type in your account, it's going to ask you for a password. Um, and so uh, you will literally just run this line, and then from then on, you can log in without a password, just like I did. Okay. Uh, if you are using Emacs, um, you should copy and paste this. And I will do a weird thing and use Sublime to do that. So Sublime Emacs. Uh, oh, it's already there. Okay, so thank you, Gene, for already doing that, I guess. Or I don't know, maybe mysterious. Um, so Emacs will do everything we want. And then lastly, uh, we want to check class and path. What we would need to do, except I know Gene's already done this, um, is in my home directory, I, if I look in this uh, file called bash profile, because uh, it's real Linux and not Ubuntu, or not uh, Mac Linux. It's in profile. And you'll see at the bottom of profile, uh, there's this. One vexing thing, by the way, is that um, scrolling, in this case with my laptop, two finger scrolling, it feels choppy. I don't know the solution for this, but if anybody finds it, let me know. But just be aware, you're going to have to get used to slightly choppier scrolling experience uh, if you're using uh, Firefox or uh, Sublime or anything else. Okay, at this point, everything should work. So I'm going to go to my work directory. Now I'm going to say, I want to check out my most recent copy of Homework 2. Okay. Mm -hmm. Checked out. Okay, so this is my most recent copy. I go to, to Arrays. Um, just to prove you that the homework thing works properly. Um, hello. Text. Hi. All right. Homework commit. <clears throat> Do I want to track hello.txt? Yes. Okay. Um. Okay, updating. It is very fun. Okay, put um, a new hello.txt. All right. So that message is there for me. And now when I go to the instructional machines, Uh, okay, so now I'll go to um, homework two. I'll say homework checkout or update, and it will get me the most recent copy, which is that one I just committed that includes hello.txt. So if I go into arrays, uh, we see hello.txt is there. It was not there before, I promise. Um, one thing I guess I should recommend too 
is uh, you might consider changing your prompt here to include some color. So for me, that's nice because then I immediately know whether or not uh, I'm logged into a remote machine without even having to think about it. Uh, so let me show you how to do that. One moment. So uh, if you go to uh, Piazza, you'll see that I posted this post, uh, how to set a prompt color. Ooh, this is the version from before I fixed it. Uh, okay, so what we can do is, let's take this information, or this text, there it is, uh, copy, and I'm going to open .bash rc. All right, so this is in your root directory. So I'm at my, my home directory. Uh, at the very bottom, uh, after all this stuff, I'm going to put this. So this says, change the prompt to this particular string, which includes some color information. And now when I open a new terminal, uh, it should look nice. All right. Um, you can tweak it however you'd like. Uh, but one real nice thing about it is now I know that whenever I find myself staring at the cold gray blankness of the instructional machine prompt, I know which terminal is which. All right. So, uh, so now as I go between these two, it's just a good mnemonic. And it also looks nicer, in my opinion, to have a two-line prompt, but that's just me. Um, okay, well, that's really all. Uh, let's call it a day on all this video stuff.